going to show you how to draw a snowman or snow woman um, from a unique point of view. We're going to be using something called a worm's eye perspective. And along the way, we're also going to work on our value, our shading, but we're gonna do it in a kind of a reverse order than we normally would. So what you're gonna need is a piece of paper. I'm using gray, but you could use really any color of paper. Uh, if you use white, you might need a gray crayon instead of a white crayon like I'm using. And that's about it, so let's get started. All right, so I have a gray piece of paper, but you may have noticed on my examples that sometimes I used a, a light purple or a light blue or green. I chose these three colors because they're known as cool colors, and since the snowman is very cold, I figured this would help the overall feeling of cool. Gray is kind of considered a, sometimes a cool neutral. I actually really like the gray paper, but remember, if you don't have a gray paper or another piece of colored paper, you do this on white paper and it will work great too. Uh, you'll just be using different crayons when you get to the coloring part. So first things first, we're going to create some guidelines for our perspective. Now remember, we're going to be like a, a worm looking up at the snowman. So if you think back to when we've done uh, other projects, that when things are closer to you, they're going to appear larger, and when they get farther away, they're going to get smaller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little dot up in this corner. This is going to kind of work as my vanishing point. Things will vanish at this point, although we probably won't be drawing all the way to the vanishing point. What I'm gonna do is if I have an eraser, I like to use my eraser to draw my guidelines. That way I don't actually have to erase them later. If you're missing an eraser, you might try drawing your guidelines very lightly with a pencil. But if you do have an eraser, either one on the end of your pencil or a big eraser that you can draw with, that would be what I would use. So I'm going to draw with my eraser here. I'm gonna draw kind of a straight line down to the bottom of my paper. Now, if I don't like that line where it ended up, the nice thing is I could just rub that off in my paper. You won't even know that it was there. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time I'm going to end up on the side, kind of the middle of the side of my paper. So in the center edge of my paper. So this is the angle we're going to use to create our snowman. It's basically going to fit inside here, but the arms, the scarf, they might not. So what you need to do, this is where I'm gonna use the tip of my pencil, draw really lightly. Um, that's the key, because if you make a mistake, you'll be able to erase. Now, the bottom of the snowman is normally quite large anyway. It's the biggest part the sphere on your snowman. But we're gonna make it even, we're gonna exaggerate that because if we were a worm looking down here on the ground, it would look even larger. So what I'm going to do is lightly put a curve and it has to fit inside that. Now once you get it more how you want, you can go ahead and just darken a bit. I'm gonna darken it so you can actually see what I drew. You don't have to make it as dark as that. It's okay because later on we can always darken it in with our crayons. I'm gonna do the middle section of my snowman. It also has to stay inside of here. And remember, the snowman is made up of usually spheres. It doesn't have to be perfect because I don't know about you, but snowmen are not always perfect outside. So I'm gonna draw lightly at first, super soft. Can't probably see that. So let me go ahead and darken that in now fit it right in there. Notice that the bottom part of my sphere is not showing here. I didn't draw the whole circle. And the reason for that is because it is overlapping, um, it is being overlapped by the bigger sphere down here on the bottom. All right, so I am going to do another one. I'm practicing first. This one's my smallest and it has to stay inside. There we go. It kind of helps me if I turn my paper diagonally. You may have noticed that I've done that. Now, this is the main part of our drawing. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna erase, use my hand to get rid of those eraser lines. And I'm going to take a white crayon. Now, if you're doing this on white paper, you may wanna use a, a light blue or an, a gray crayon to do this next part. So I'm gonna use white because my paper's gray. And I'm going to create 
a value along the edge of my paper. Now I'm pushing very bright. It's opposite if you're on the colored paper and using a white crayon. Normally when I'm pushing hard I'm creating a dark value, but when I'm doing this technique I'm actually creating the lightest value by pushing hardest because I'm using a white crayon. I'm going to go around the edge of my sphere. If we just left it plain and colored it in this way it would look very flat and I'm trying to make this look a little more three-dimensional, like a sphere. I bet you can think of other things that are spheres. So I'm making a very bright white along the edge. Now I don't want it just to be a stripe of white. Now that I've got my brightest white, I'm going to use my white crayon, and I'm not going to push as hard. I'm going to soften that up and let some of the gray of the paper or blue or purple show through just a little bit. I found that the purple and the gray paper actually showed the white crayon the best, so that's why I'm using my gray. So you'll notice that this area right here is not quite as bright as the other one. That's because I'm letting some of the gray of the paper show through. And you can decide how far you want to take that. I'm going to do it a little bit more. I want a little more white snow. If you feel like your snow is too gray, keep doing this until you're satisfied. Sometimes I even like to do a little bit on the bottom where it would be sitting on the ground. I like to have a little bit of a value down here. Notice that I'm when I'm coloring, I'm kind of using a curved motion, kind of following the contour of that snow sphere. All right, that looks very nice. Now, that was my biggest one, so it's going to that took me the longest to do. I am going to do the same thing for the smaller spheres. Today we are just going to be working on the snow in our picture. And next time, I will be showing you how to add some details to your snowman. Please do not try to draw the face or the arms of your snowman just yet. We are working just on the shading, putting values on our snowman. And it's okay to leave a little bit of the middle of your sphere not colored in. If your crayon is getting down to where the paper is, you may have to peel some of that back. And don't forget to do your final sphere. This is a little bit, not quite a perfect sphere. It's a little, must have been a little melted at the top. All right, so this is looking very nice. Now, I said we were gonna do the snow, so I am also going to add some snowflakes, and I do that by adding X and then a line through the X. Now, if you have another way of doing a snowflake that you prefer, I'm gonna leave kind of this area right up here empty for right now, because I know later on I'm probably gonna add a hat up there and on one side, I'm going to add a scarf. So you might want to kind of think about leaving the area right around the top of your snowman blank for right now. You can always go back later. Maybe I'll do one right up in this corner though, just to be a little bit different. So the thing is, of course, your snowflake could be in front of the scarf or the hat. If you happen to have that happen, it won't be a big deal. Um, this is where we're going to probably stop for the day. And when you're finished uh, with this part, don't, like I said, I'll show you this example. This is kind of where we're headed, but don't draw the face or the scarf or any of that yet. What I want you to do right now, you've done enough work for the day, write your name. And if you're at school, write your code. Uh, if you're at home, you can post this to Seesaw today. You don't have to put it onto Artsonia. 
we will save the Artsonia pictures for when we have a finished snowman. All right, so I hope you're having a great day. Um, practice this. Um, remember, any color paper really can work. You might even try using dark paper. It might be really awesome. So have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.